Half of the so-called Magnificent Seven stocks, famed as they are, have reported earnings results. And next up, we'll hear from Apple and Amazon after the bell today. Amazon is expected to report double-digit sales growth for the third quarter, fueled by cloud computing and its ad businesses. Here with more on what to expect, we've got John Blackledge, who is the TD Cowan Managing Director and Senior Equity Research Analyst. John, great to have you back on Yahoo Finance with us. So let, let's start Thanks. there with Amazon. I mean, the ad business has been growing one of the fastest fastest growing parts of its business. But then, of course, you've got cloud where we've really relied on the majority of those margins to be invested back into other elements that Amazon is able to showcase to investors will add on shareholder value here. What are your anticipations going into this report? Yeah, I mean, uh, the two big areas, like you said, AWS, uh, we're looking for 20% uh, revenue growth. That would be up from high, high 18 ish percent last quarter so we're looking for excel further acceleration at aws that'll be led by um they had these cost optimizations that were impacting the business last year and into this year so those are kind of over and then bolstered by you know generative ai revenue um so further acceleration there and also we're looking for good margins mid, mid 30 percent uh operating income margins the margins have also been good uh at aws um one of the reasons is the hiring environment, um, they've just been um, hiring at a slower pace than in in, uh, in prior years. So I um, think AWS will be good. And the just the other area is total operating income uh, in 3Q and, and the 4Q guide investors were definitely over the last couple of weeks talking about that. Um, we're looking for $18 billion uh, in operating income in 4Q. So that, that guide, that guide range for op income will be important uh, 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 during earnings tonight. And John, um, we heard from Microsoft that one of their constraints on forward Azure growth is actually that they're not getting the data center capacity necessarily that they wanted. Is that going to be an issue for, for Amazon, do you think? Yeah, we'll, we'll see. I mean, we'll have to see. I mean, a Amazon in the past or over the past year at some point said they have three times more data capacity than their than the next closest player to them. So I don't know. I don't believe they will call call that out. Uh, we'll have to see. Um, I, what I am looking for and what's important, um, at 1Q they said that Gen AI revenue was growing at a multi-billion dollar run rate. At 2Q they did not update us. So that's something that I'm looking for. You know, maybe if they don't update us and don't talk about what Microsoft was talking about, you know, maybe uh, we can infer that there's, you know, uh, capacity constraints. Well, that brings up a really good point, John, which is that like there's no standard yet for what we're hearing from these cloud companies about AI specifically. They all seem to do it a little differently. Is that a problem? You know, do they need to? I know it's early in, a, in Gen AI, but don't we need some more information from them? Well, and, and just to be clear, my, my colleague uh, Derek Wood covers Microsoft, and yes, I, I do think Microsoft did. I think Microsoft called out uh, it, it helped AWS growth by like twelve percent or something like Azure that. Azure growth, yeah, um, exactly. All right, sorry, Azure growth, yeah. Um, AWS, like I said, they they say multi billion dollar run rate, and then Alphabet, they didn't update us either. They said Gen AI uh, in the multi billion dollar revenue range. So uh, you're right. I mean, and then I think the broader point. Uh, broader question is the return on the huge spend, right? The in huge AI infrastructure build out for all of these companies. Um, yeah, and but I have to say, like you know, like you know, like the companies are not always consistent in terms of how they disclose uh, certain things, even if they're in the same business. But um, I, I understand what you're saying, and uh, we'll, we're looking for for more color, uh, you know, kind of on how uh, they're monetizing generative AI. John, while we have you here, you also uh, cover Uber. Uber reported earlier, and one of the huge things that we're tracking there, the share price reaction, number one, down just shy of 10% here as trading has commenced. You have a buy rating on the stock, have had a buy rating on the stock since February. Uh, investors clearly souring on it after this earnings report. Wonder you know, what that's doing in your perspective here and, and how that kind of plays into your own calculus around the name. Yeah, uh, for sure. Uh you know, I think it's a little overdone. It was a solid quarter. Uh, Uber's gross bookings were up 20% constant currency. Mobility was up 24%, uh, delivery up 17%. They had record EBITDA, $1.7 billion. It was up 55% year over year. They've generated $6 billion in free cash flow over the last 12 months. Uh, they're ramping up their buyback. And the 4Q guide was solid. I mean, the 
gross booking guide and the EBITDA guide bracketed uh, our TD Cowan estimates and, and street consensus. Uh, and, and Uber will be ending the year growing uh, gross bookings, you know, high teens to low 20% and EBITDA uh, low to mid 40, uh, 40%. Uh, I think the stock is down a little bit. Tech, big tech is down a little bit. Uh, the gross bookings for mobility were a little bit light. Uh, and trip growth decelerated uh, slightly. Uh, but again, I think it's kind of overdone and we're buyers on weakness. John, thanks so much. It's good to see you. TD Cowan Managing Director, appreciate it. Thank you.